This morning, we are blessed once again to have Dr. Salim Sarani joining us to answer many of your questions regarding uh, coronavirus. And Dr. Sarani, good morning to you. My first question has to do with uh, the president cutting funding to the WHO, to the World Health Organization, regardless of who made mistakes on either end or where everyone will look. Is this a dangerous time to cut funding to this group? Uh, absolutely. If you look at it, whenever you have a pandemic, it doesn't involve one country. It involves everyone. That's what pandemic means. It involves every country around the globe. And the only way to beat the pandemic is when everyone works together. Because the globe is a very small, single community, and we are very in integrally linked to each other. So, for example, if you have controlled it over a year, but you cannot live in a bubble all your life and all your decades. So you have to have a communication, and the only way to... Uh, find a victory is to have every country control and contain and mitigate their infection. And again, if you look at it, the African Union are combining together and they realize the importance of this fact that working together is the only way they can defeat this virus and get control over the pandemic. I can understand a lot of the differences can be happening, but whenever there is a crisis, whenever there is a, a challenges in the community, everyone gets on the table together, work like a team, and then resolve the differences once that is over. That's my take. Yeah, that sounds like good advice. Deal with, uh, deal with it after the problem has been solved. A uh, question from our viewer now, uh, people texting in the phone number on the bottom of the screen if you're interested in having Dr. Sarani uh, answer some of your questions. Is chest pain or chest tightness a symptom of the virus? Uh, no fever, no cough. I have allergies really bad, so uh, this is really confusing. And I hear that from a lot of our viewers, I'm asthmatic, allergies. Um, how does that tie into uh, some of the symptoms of coronavirus? The thing is that the chest pain, chest tightness, allergies, those are very non-specific symptoms. So anytime when your doctor or your healthcare provider takes a look at it, they look at the constellations of symptoms. They don't only look at one symptom, they look into it, whether you had any travel history, you had any contact, whether there was a high community transmission in your area, and what the symptoms, the duration, the incubation period, all those things come into the place. Yes, can you have some chest tightness and shortness of breath? Absolutely, because uh, but so is the other 100 condition can cause that. So it is not as simple as it looks. And a lot of the time, if your oxygen level is low, what we do is a little pulse oximetry check on that. And if those are a little bit low, then that can actually tell that you, if you're having chest tightness, shortness of breath, and your oxygen level is low, then definitely that is a concerning. It doesn't mean that you have a COVID, but it, it can be one of the several uh, differential diagnoses like asthma, COPD, or even you have a heart failure, those all can cause those issues. But if you're very young and you don't have any of those conditions, then it may be more concerning. Uh, another viewer wants to know, uh, it's their understanding that COVID-19 can be carried on shoes, uh, regardless, uh, regarding the germs that are on there. Should they wash pillows? Should they get a new toothbrush? All those things, if it can be transferred like that. I think you need to go uh, with a low-hanging fruit. You know, any time when you talk about the germs can be passed through that, absolutely, it can be passed. The question is, which are the most potential area, which are the most area where you can control and you get the maximum, you know, benefit out of your bug. And, I, you know, if you look at it, we discuss about the shoes. It can carry the virus for hours to days, depending on, you know, how much viral load you have. But as the time goes by, it decreases. The best thing is you wear one shoes when you're going outside. When you come in, take your shoes outside in a hot zone so that you don't bring your germs inside the house. That would be the easiest way to mitigate. And once you take it out, make sure you wash your hand and whatever clothes you're wearing, change it out, take a shower before you go and interact with your family because you don't want the bugs from outside to get in your home. And what our next viewer wants to know if uh, a person has the virus, can they get that again? Uh, we've talked about this before with uh, reoccurrence, and that's something that we're paying close attention to, correct? Yeah, that is, uh, again, you know, it's a moving target. We definitely have seen several cases from the other country where the person who had the infection, and anytime when you have an infection, you develop the antibody, and they get better. But one of the things is, even after getting better, some of the patients, uh, patients have got the reinfection. 
The question is whether did they really mount the antibody uh, strong on the first place. The second thing is whether we really check them that they were clear of the infection or their symptom just resolved and they were just kind of in a protractive, a slow phase of the infection and then they had a research when their immunity went down again. So there are a lot of questions which has to be unanswered, but most part, whatever we know from the viruses, if you get an infection, you get a, a strong antibody, you are done. You don't get the infection from the same virus, but if the virus goes under mutation, like flu, you know, every year the flu infection, the virus mutate, and we try to come up with a vaccine to tackle those things. So if there is some more virus mutation down the course, then yes, it is a possible, but it's still it will provide significant amount of immunity and they may not get the worst of the worst illnesses. Dr. Sarani is going to be joining us all morning long. We appreciate you being here. If you do have a question for the good doctor, you can uh, send him, uh, send us a text. That is at 361-855-6397. The information on your screen right there. Please save it in your phone. It's the easiest way to start a conversation with us. Dr. Sarani, thank you so very much for being here this morning. Again, we are indebted to you.